my mom more was like, oh, you don't like boys. You don't have a boyfriend. You just have to work on school. And uh, it really left me without guidance in some ways. And I, so I, you know, went to my friends or just made up my own uh, kind of rules or whatever, because, you know, I was in rebellion. Is it more helpful saying, well, if this is your boyfriend, we want to meet him. He could come over at these times and then he can leave or we're going all to the movies. He could also go to the movies to try to integrate him to the family a little bit more. Because kids often sneak and do something, you know, sexual or something like that. They're not sneaking to the movies together or sneaking just to hang out. Hi, thank you so much for joining the Falling for Learning podcast. I am T.D. Blinoff. We have this podcast to help parents and caregivers with having the resources, strategies, and tools needed to make sure that their children are on track for learning and to stay on track for success. Hello, thank you so much for joining us on the Falling for Learning podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about striking a balance between parental guidance and teen autonomy. So how do we build independence for our teens um, and our tweens? And that is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And we're going to talk about what it takes to really make a successful transition into independence for our children. Okay, let's get into it. Um, So so how are we doing today? (laughs) I hope everyone's doing well out there today. So I'm about to present at the California Council for the Social Studies today. So I am, you know, recording this podcast before I leave, going to Orange County to do that. And um, a little bit nervous and all of that, but we're going to be talking about podcasting for civic responsibility when it comes to our students. And so that's kind of in the back of my mind as I'm going through that. Um, But let's get into our topic today about building independence for teens. Um, So I say this all the time that we are, as parents, in the business of getting, working ourselves out of a job. Now, not working ourselves out of a relationship. I'm not saying that. I always want to make sure I uh, back that up with, you know, not working ourselves out of a relationship, but working ourselves out of a job where they do not have to depend on us and look to us to help provide for them and uh, make decisions for them and all of that. Now, what is normal at this age? Our teens and our tweens are starting to uh, pull away from us and want to be more independent. And we talked on my last one of our last episodes about how to maintain that communication with students and you know, children of this age because they're There have been instances where some of us have had this communication break, which is very hard. Um, So in that same vein, we're thinking about how can we prepare ourselves and our students, our children for being independent. And again, it's a, you know, it, it's, it's, it's hard, not easy at all. Um, And there's not one right way to do it, but there are definitely some missteps that we can take that are a wrong way to do it. So we really got to think about this. So decision making. As they get older, number one, they're going to be starting to make some of their own decisions. So some of the little things that automatically come is food choices. So kids, um, obviously, when you're when they're younger, you give them the food, you put it in front of them, you may even feed it to them. But as they get older, and they have more time away from you, uh, like with middle school, for example, they have like nutrition time, they could go buy things during um, the uh, breaks, the lunchtime, there may be more lunch choices. It's not just what the cafeteria serves. There may be vending machines or even other places to buy from, depending on, you know, what what the makeup of their school is or whatever. Uh, if they go to other people's houses, they may have different choices and they may not just go by what you want them to eat. Like, OK, in this family, we don't eat beef, but kids may be really comfortable choosing to eat other things besides beef. Um, or eating beef when maybe at home they don't eat it. Um, So making decisions about what they eat and even, well, just let me tell you with my family, I grew up more of in a household where like, this is what we cook, this is what you eat it. 
If you don't want it, that's your business. You know, I guess you're not going to eat. <laughs> and that's how it worked. So, um, you know, I didn't really have opinions and everybody's different. That was just me. You know, obviously other people have opinions like what they like, what they don't like, but I pretty much ate what they told me I was going to, they were going to eat. I may eat it really slowly, but eventually I ate it. And that was that. But it's good to have some times now that we're thinking about how the kids can have a choice about what they're eating and what their preference is for eating. Sometimes we have kids at early ages are like, I'm not eating meat. Like, I can't eat that. And they've made choices. And, you know, some of us are more lenient towards that and some of us aren't. But as they get older, for sure, we want to talk to them about the food choices they're making. And because their bodies are changing so much, those food choices can really alter the way that they look. They could gain a lot of weight or uh, have a lot of acne or whatever related to the food choices they're making. So really having an open communication with them and talking to them about moderation is really important because obviously very soon, you know, they're going to be in a situation where they can eat whatever they want. They could have those five helpings of ice cream that we only told them they could have one, right? And so having conversations with them, try not to vilify them for the food choices that they're making, but telling them to talk about, um, to think about what they're feeling when they're eating certain food, certain foods and helping them to, you know, maintain a balance and think about their health and think about their energy levels or even maybe something gets them sick if they eat too much of it. The other part we also want to think about is as they're getting older, there's the freedom and responsibility kind of balance that we want students to have. Our kids are getting more and more independent if they're in a regular school or public school or or, or whatever type of school, right? They're leaving your home. They're not doing homeschooling. They're having some different levels of responsibility. In elementary school, teachers are walking kids to the playground. They're walking them to their music class. They're walking them to wherever they need to go. They pick them up from the playground and they walk them to the class. So middle school automatically gives you another level of freedom and responsibility. So they are not getting picked up. They need to walk to their class. They may need to line up at their class or walk into their class before it begins and sit down and get work started, get established, get their materials out. Different teachers have different expectations, but that's another area of responsibility, another level, right? No one's walking them in a line to class from wherever they were on the playground or wherever. So Certain students navigate this very easily. Certain children, you know, go to class late. They mess around. They play. Um, they lose track of time. Uh, they may um, do it on purpose, accidentally. Uh, so, again, talking to them about this responsibility and this freedom is something to help them with them navigating it. Ways we could prepare them for that is, for example, in the grocery store, if we go to the mall or something like that, having them meet you back at a certain spot, giving them an hour, 30 minutes to kind of navigate on their own is one way to help prepare them for that independence. And if they're not responsible for that, then, you know, you don't give them that risk you know, that opportunity next time. And then you give them a couple of chances. They have to stay with you. And then, okay, we'll try it again. You get a half an hour. You may even lengthen it if that half an hour they dealt with really well. Give them an hour or something like that. So you are slowly building them up into independence with, you know, navigating a store or a public place on their own. And then tell them, you know, how much you trust them and how much you're glad that they came back and they kept in communication or whatever they they did what they were supposed to do. Um, you could also tell them, you know, you did a couple of things wrong, but here's what you did right. And so we want to make sure we work on that. And, you know, those are ways that you can help build in the independence for your child, even if they're not, you know, being schooled outside of the home. There are other ways to build that in. Another area is the privacy and boundaries. Uh, so, at this age, uh, the tweens and teens, um, a lot of them have phones. And for example, they may not tell you the code of your phone or whatever. We will have a guest coming up on the show to really talk about how we could really protect our students and our children uh, with 
the um, with the social media and the you know the technology, the addictions, all of that, um, how to manage it. Uh, but just a brief word when we're talking about privacy and boundaries, you want to think about you know your child, talk to them about what you expect from them, and then make sure they are following those guidelines. And again, if they're regularly following guidelines, that could give you some time to really consider what's a next step, what more freedom could you give them, or some more privacy for certain things. So it's it's really hard to navigate. Um, of course, depending on the child, they may be in um, a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, romantic relationship, or whatever, and you have to really uh, kind of set, really set boundaries about, you know, when they should be by themselves and how they should be alone. One thing about that too is, I don't know, again, you are a parent who's going to make these decisions, but these are some things to consider. Uh, when I was a kid. <laughs> Hello, parents. All across the United States, we have students who don't know how to read well and who don't know how to write well. Now, I'm not here to shame you, but I am here to blame you. If your child is behind, it is partially your responsibility and your fault. That next generation needs to be the one that's telling your story, not other people, not other families, not other races or ethnicities, your family needs to be able to tell your story. And if your child can't write well, who's gonna tell your story? I have written two books to help address these issues. It is the Rewrite Method, the Parent and Educator Guide for Getting Middle Schoolers to Fall in Love with Writing, and the Rewrite Method Workbook, the Parent and Educator Action Plan for Getting Middle Schoolers to Fall in Love with Writing. This book gives you step-by-step -step and easy to use and implement activities to make sure that your child not only gets better at writing, but loves to write. Join us for Well-Educated Wednesdays every Wednesday on Instagram Live at Falling for Learning. It is a free parent question and answer session where parents can ask questions, learn about resources, strategies and tips to make sure their children are on track for learning and stay on track for success. That's every Wednesday on Instagram Live at Falling for Learning. We look forward to seeing you and helping the next generation thrive. My mom more was like, oh, you don't like boys. You don't have a boyfriend. You just have to work on school. And while that is one way to do that, uh, it really left me without guidance in some ways. And I, so I, you know, went to my friends or just made up my own uh, kind of rules or whatever because, you know, I was in rebellion. So <laughs> it is something that you, what I find is more helpful in that, in that situation is saying, well, if this is your boyfriend, we want to meet him. He could come over at these times and then he can leave or we're going all to the movies. He could also go to the movies to try to integrate him to the family a little bit more. Because kids often sneak uh, and do something, you know, sexual or something like that. A lot of times they're not sneaking to the movies together or sneaking just to hang out. And But if you already have that person that, in part in the family and integrate it into some activities and things like that is easier to uh, have boundaries like well now he needs to go home rather than you don't need to see him at all and you don't need to communicate with him which means they're going to just sneak off and do what they want to do and a lot of times it's not just hanging out innocently so that's just a you know think about it what works for your family um, to consider it because just denying kids straight out and not giving them any boundaries just saying nope we don't do that here really leads to some challenging outcomes later so you again want to still remain someone that they could look to and trust and go to when there's issues 
If you just say no all the time to them and say they can't do this, they can't do that, they can't do this, then they quickly decide, um, I, they're, that's the person I cannot talk to my mom about that or my dad to, about that, and I won't get their advice about that, and they won't understand and they won't listen. So it's something that you really have to think about. You really have to, it's a balancing act. You're not going to just open up, you know, free reign. They do whatever they want to do. And you're not going to say, no, you can't do this. You can't do that. No, 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 no. Right. That does not work well. Um, So you don't want to be extreme. You want to be in a balance for the children. And that keeps that communication open. That keeps that trust open. And, um, and, and they still could come to you, right? But if it's always no, there's no reason to ask you anymore, right? There's no reason to ask you. And they'll just sneak off and do things or, or whatever. Um, so it's, it's really important. You really have to think about it. You know, if you're co-parenting or you have your uh, husband or something like that, talk to them about what the balance is. You also want to talk to your kids. Like, we think this is fair. You need to do this or, you know, Talk to them about it. Again, you may not negotiate on certain things, but other things you may negotiate on, right? Um, So just really think about this because a a lot of us may really want to be strict, but make sure you're strict, but you also give some leverage or freedom in certain areas and talk to them about why, Um, because it really... um, it's hard when kids just shut down on you. And the shutdown could look very different. They could just pretend to be listening to you, nod their head, thank you, and then go on about their business. So again, you want to make sure that you are providing a balance and talking to them about that balance. Another area that you want to think about is financial, right? Obviously, a lot of our kids are making a lot of money, uh, depending on, you know, they might be working. If Even if they're working, a lot of them aren't making enough money. Well, let me step back a little bit, right? Because I know they have these NIL deals is what it's called, I think. <laughs> and so some of them people, the kids do have money. So, but, you know, if your child isn't making a lot of money or they are making a lot of money, either way, we want to give them some guidance in financial issues, right? Uh, how much money are they saving? How much money are they spending? Um, you know, are they just giving money away to people? I have, as I was growing up, and even as my daughter was growing up as well, has definitely seen friends with, you know, parents that were rich or whatever, and they are just giving money to friends. Um, and it's, you know, are they there because they're getting money from that friend or is that an actual friend to them? I don't know. So again, talk to your kids about this. Um, Talk to them about how they're saving their money, how they're managing their money, Um, especially if they are in those big deals where they're making a lot of money. But either way, money is is part of life and they need to understand how to spend it, how to save it, how to use it for their advantage and then making sure people aren't taking advantage of them because of the money they have or the money that they don't have, right? Sometimes there's relationships with friends, like they'll always buy you something because you don't have it. And maybe they'll treat you a certain way because you don't have it. So again, really having really honest conversations about giving and taking. If they're borrowing money from somebody, if someone's borrowing money from them, how to handle that? Because that can miss, that can mess up relationships too. Being honest, right? If your friend takes you out one time, you take your friend out the next time. If your friend lets you borrow something, give that money back to your friend. If your friend borrows money from you, you know, uh, ask them to get it back by a certain time and figure out what to do if they're not going to give it back. But again, you know, it's really tricky. You want to share some rules about money with your child. Now, if you don't have rules about money, I would say get yourself together so that you can help them navigate. And maybe they're part of that journey where you're getting some of those finances together. It may not be every detail of your finances, but maybe it's just like I used to just go out and shop 
But then I realized my credit card was $3,000, whatever. And so now I know that I have to budget and pay attention how much money I'm going to spend. So they don't need to know everything about your finances, but there could be an area of finances that you could share with your child about what you're working on and help them work on it as well. So we, some of these things, we have to have ourselves together in order to make sure our kids are together. So you know, getting your your child on track for learning and staying on track for success. Part of it, we have to get ourselves together too. We have to be reflecting and we have to be planning about what messages we want to send to our children. Very, very important. So another thing we want to talk about, about the independence and all of that is, you know, sometimes again, this age is where we start seeing kids buck against our rules or, or whatever, but we need to really teach them about respect, right? Um, and, and a lot of kids, I hear this a lot, like, oh, I need to be respected. Right. Respect does go both ways. So there's ways that you can show them respect by when they bring up something to you or you're talking to you, you're actually listening to them. You are considering some things that they said. You're not dismissing their um, ideas or their um opinions about things right and as as a as an adult it's very easy like that that's not real you don't really love this person or you really don't know what it means to be tired or whatever you know we dismiss how they feel and what they go through and again um that leads to them pulling away from us more because we don't understand them and we don't want to hear from them we got to think about respecting their ideas i remember being very young and thinking you know no one has been in love like i've been in love no one has ever had this feeling like I, you know so for whatever reason when you're young you just think i'm the only one going through this or this is how it is for me and no one else can understand um but again, part of them being independent and gaining freedom is you acknowledging how they feel and then helping them to navigate, to ask them questions um, and try not to judge them in a harsh way. Um, but, you know, of course, inside or to our friends, we could say they're really being silly or they're acting crazy right now. But to them, you, you want to try to avoid that because it really shuts down things from them. When you feel like you don't understand them, you don't see their perspective. You're just an old person who doesn't know what you're talking about um, because it, it can quickly change to that. Right. If we make it that way, um, we're adversarial or um just where you're going to just tell them what they need to do instead of try to help them understand um, your perspective or help them think through what they're doing. Um, it's just so important. Well, our kids are going to make mistakes, right? They're going to make mistakes. So what it's really important for us to do is think about how those mistakes can be navigated, right? So we want to think about you know, even though they're independent and they may be making a misstep, they didn't come back um, to this part of the mall at the right time. They were nowhere to be found when it was time to pick them up. Um, and they could you, you could say, well, I don't trust you to do this. But you also want them to get a way to gain back the trust. So whatever mistake they're making, try to give them a way to gain back the trust. And this is really important. This goes right along with natural consequences right so not just arbitrary consequences but natural consequences and then helping them to build it up giving them a certain amount of time and then giving that responsibility back to them or try it out again and see how they do so part of helping them become independent is knowing those natural consequences experiencing those natural consequences and then helping them build from wherever they are Right. Um, so when we do this, we could help them navigate like these teenage years, these hard times um, and really try not to come down on them in such a hard way that they feel like you cannot be someone they talk to or trust. And you're a person who always says no and they never can talk to. They will stop talking to you. And they may like you like I'm saying is they may not to your face, be like, I'm not talking to my mom. They could still be talking to you. But as far as talking to you about real things in their life, they might just close that off to you. And you don't even know what they're hiding or they won't, they won't bring it up or they'll, 
bring up just really surface level things and you think, oh, everything's fine or whatever, but they've really withdrawn that trust from you and you didn't really know. So you got to make sure you try to navigate what they're going through, talk to them about what they're going through, um, help them think about these different areas of their life, um, you know, freedom, responsibility, how the time that they're away from you, how they should be conducting themselves, um, making sure they're being responsible, um, really validating what they're going through, right? A lot of people want to dismiss what young people are going through because we've been through it and it wasn't a big deal now that we're back on the other side. They're in the middle of it and it's a big deal for them. So please don't uh, dismiss their emotions and their feelings because they will dismiss you even if you don't realize it. Um, and then they're in more danger because there's not anyone reliable necessarily to turn to. They could be turning to those young and dumb friends that don't know what the heck is going on, um, but you have closed yourself off as a source for them um, by the way you talk to them and you deal with them. So these are very important things to consider. Um, Continue to talk to your child. Tell them what you'd like them to be able to do on their own. They could talk to you about what they'd like to be doing on their own. You could negotiate it. You could tell them certain things are non-negotiable. But making sure that those relationships that they are experiencing with their friends, platonic friends, their um, romantic friend, uh, partnership uh, relationships, all of those are ways that you can speak life into them and you could be a source of comfort and advice for them is making sure that you are, you know, respecting what they're going through and how they're feeling. Um, so just so important. Some of us like really have taken some wrong turns and we know we could look back and see our parents took some wrong turns with us and it led to some really negative outcomes um, that could have been avoided had we, you know, had an opportunity to keep those communication lines open. Thank you for joining us for the Falling for Learning podcast. We appreciate you joining us and have a great week. Thanks again for supporting the Falling for Learning podcast. New episodes go live every Saturday at 5 p.m. You can watch us 